Bid or Buy is one of South Africa's top online shops leading the chase for opportunities in the rest of Africa. Now to tell us more about this art of buying and selling is Johan Dutoit, the business development manager of the company. Welcome to the show, Johan. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, <laughs> let's begin with buying and selling just yes. as a trade itself. Yes. How the whole economics work. How the economics work, well, the Bid or Buy platform is designed uh, to bring buyers and sellers together. So um, for a lot of traders and entrepreneurs out there, it's, it's really difficult to start up a business. Uh, there's a lot of uh, money and overheads involved. And especially if you want to move into the online space, it becomes even more expensive and you never really know what you're going to get. So the Bid or Buy platform was designed to bring buyers and sellers together and to give sellers an opportunity to sell online um, and make use of, of all our experience and, and everything that we've learned over the past 12 years being in this business uh, without any of the costs or without any of the risks involved. Okay, now I know bid or buy, or buy is really huge in South Africa yes. and you chose Kenya as your next platform, yes. why Kenya? Oh, well, it's, uh, for us it's <laughs> obvious. Um, Kenya is a fantastic country, it's a lovely place. Um, but the main reasons for us business-wise that we decided to come here first is obviously language isn't a big barrier. We're both uh, English-speaking countries where, where English is spoken by most of the population, um, which makes it easier to do business and to get uh, to understand each other. Um, also, the Kenyan eco economy is very stable. The currency is very stable. And it's just the people as well. They're very open to new things, I would, I would say, with, with what I've seen so far. And, um, and also the internet penetration in Kenya as well with the amount of people online was, okay. a, was a big factor for us. Okay. You launched in 2009. How was the reception? Um, well, we actually launched in 2010. Mm -hmm. um, the reception was a bit mixed. I think people uh, have, uh, have seen a lot of shops and, and online sites and things mm -hmm. come and go. Mm -hmm. um, also, when you're not the one holding the goods yourself and you, they're buying from other people on your platform, uh, there was a fair bit of skepticism, mm -hmm. um, but we are seeing every month our stats are growing, the, the amount of traffic to the sites increasing, the amount of people who are actually buying things are, are increasing as well, and the feedback that we're getting now is very, very positive. So. We feel we're on the right track. <laughs> okay, great. Now, talking about things coming and going, we've always had this notion that any South African product lasts about two, three years, then it shuts down. Kalahari yeah. is huge. in It's all, on, also an online buying or selling platform. It's yes. huge in South Africa. Yes. But then they closed shop this year, um, which just came as a shock to everyone. Uh, are you going to sustain <laughs> bid or buy here in Kenya? Yes, uh, well, I think the thing with Kalahari was a shock for everyone. Um, even us in South Africa that watched them fairly closely, we didn't expect that to happen. Mm -hmm. um, but our business model is very different to, to theirs. Um, we are a company that are a lot more conservative in our approach. Mm -hmm. um, I know for, for the online market to really take off in Kenya, we are expecting it to take another three to four years. Mm -hmm before we'll see really big growth and before we really see people um, buying and selling and trading online where it becomes mainstream. So we had to plan for that and I need to make sure that I will be around for three or four years to do that. Um, so I will be around. Okay. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> um, we've as a consumer or a seller of, of, of certain um, products, how mm. does Bid or Buy um, work for me? Okay, so what we do is we provide you with a, a, a almost like an online store um, where you can load your products and you can then expose it to, to the rest of the world. Um, you can load anything that you like, um, as long as it's legal, of, of course. <laughs> we, uh, we don't trade in, in illegal products, but um, so, so the what sellers can do, it's very broad. Um, they can load anything they like, they can load as much as they like, and it's a free platform to use. So we don't charge them to load products. It's a free service to try. Um, how we do make our income though is if somebody sells something, we take a little commission at the end. So we feel any, any uh, entrepreneur would be willing to pay for a service if they feel that it's working. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the seller can do that. And then what we do for them is we make sure that we market our platform, we make sure that we drive traffic to it, and we make sure that we get people to come to the store. Because it's one thing having a website, and any website owner will tell you, 
having a website is the first part of the battle. The second part is to get people to know that you actually have one and for people to, to drive traffic through your site. So we do all of those things for the seller and he doesn't have to he doesn't have to worry about those sort of things. Okay. When you talk about a little commission, how much are we talking the about? The most we will ever charge for anything is five percent. And that five percent is inclusive of VAT as well. So it's the it's the inclusive amount. So if you work that out it comes to a little bit less. But it's a sliding scale. So the the higher the sale amount is, the lower the commission will go. So up to like five thousand shillings it will be five percent. When it goes above that it'll drop to four percent, then to three and a half percent. So the higher the the okay. cost of the of the item the lower the commission so that it stays reasonable for 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 the seller to do it okay and of course here we're talking about um big companies that will load a lot of products or uh, on the site what yes. about possibly uh, someone who wants to get rid of a car they want to sell a car an appliance that yes. they have does it work the same works exactly the mm -hmm. same um and that's the beauty of the marketplace is it it's really a fair and a level level playing field for everyone so even if you're selling stuff from home um, where you want to get rid of your old couch or your car like you said or old tennis racket or even if you want to start a business online where you want to work in the evenings to supplement your income you will be on exactly the same footing as a big company so it's um it's a it's a nice open and inclusive marketplace for okay. everyone you did mention it's one thing having a website it's another letting people know that the website exists yes. uh, despite that what other hurdles have you had to um, overcome um well the marketing is obviously the the main thing uh, you need to get people through there because it's no point having a lot of products on there if nobody comes to buy it then it doesn't make sense for for a seller but it is, we work on it constantly, uh, all the time. We've got a, our own team of developers where the site always evolves. Mm -hmm. and the buyer and the seller's needs continues to change every year. And we need to make sure that we stay on top of that and, and, and do that. So where we just had a web platform a year ago, when you go to Bid or Buy Now, you'll see that there's mobile sites as well. There's iPhone applications. So it's just, we, we're really trying to make an, an put the site where the people are and um, not tell Kenyans or South Africans interact with us where we want you to act, interact with us mm -hmm. as we will go and interact with you where you are so you don't have to go out of your comfort zone. Okay great now Johan if you can tell us a bit more about the comparisons about um, online buying and selling in terms of if you compare the market in South Africa and here in Kenya yes. what are some of the differences and uh, uh, yes. challenges? The differences are vast um, Firstly, Kenya's got more internet users than South Africa. It's, it's said to be about 11 million people that are online, where South Africa only has 6 million. Um, oh, really? <laughs> yes. Um, but then again, if you look at the, the types of users, the South African internet user seems to be a little bit more um, sophisticated, if I can put it that way, because internet is a lot more expensive in South Africa. Um, it's not as easily accessible. So the person who uses it is normally from a much higher income group. Mm -hmm. um, they normally have bank accounts. They normally have credit cards. Um, so for them to make that move and to shop online is, is, is quite simple. Um, just last week for Christmas, now we're talking about Christmas shopping. Um, our website did over 30,000 transactions just in the week. Um, so a smaller base is doing a lot more transactions. Where in Kenya, the, the population is, is a lot different. So not a lot of people have got bank accounts, credit cards, and so forth. So um, they're not used to transacting online that much. A lot of them work with M-Pesa, and we've built it into our site, so people can pay each other with, uh, with, mobile, with mobile money and, and, and through those gateways. So now we're seeing growth there. Um, but then also the average amount of money that people spend, um, the average uh, sale amount in Kenya is quite a lot higher than what it is in South Africa. So there's a lot of things that really are intriguing us mm -hmm. and, it's, um, and I really feel that um, we should look at the businesses differently and, and I would, once you start comparing Kenyans and South Africans with each other, I think you could miss quite a lot of important information. So we try and focus on, on Kenya um, we try and keep the marketplace separate from South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, I'm building an office here and a team here which are Kenyan mm -hmm. um, because I don't want people to think it's South Africans telling Kenyans what to do. Um, we really need to, to get this, this, this marketplace to have a Kenyan feel to it mm -hmm. um, for it to be run and embraced by Kenyans um, so that it'll, 
it'll work because every country does have its differences. Okay. Now, is it a challenge for you that with internet penetration here in Kenya having mm. grown significantly, mm. uh, most companies now are actually going online. Yes. So they have websites where they actually display their array of products there. So mm. um, on business thinking, they would think, why should I be charged a commission on selling my product? Yes. Well, I have a website. Okay. I, I can do the same thing. Yes. Has it been a challenge for you and how are you overcoming it? Um, it hasn't actually. Um, what we have found is businesses that, that are going online know that they have to sell through as many different avenues as they can. Mm -hmm. And it's also, it all, it all amounts to the cost of the transaction. If, they, if it makes sense for them economically to, to sell on bid or buy, they will. And we are seeing, especially in Kenya, that online businesses are, are adapting and, and joining bid or buy a lot faster than, than any other uh, group so far. So it's not been that big a challenge for us. Uh, the, the online community is actually embracing the Bidder by platform quite nicely, which we are, we are very pleased about. Okay. I know you said it's only people with legal businesses that can actually <laughs> use the platform, yes. but there has been a lot of fraudsters on the net. Um, how are you like, overcoming mm. that challenge? Um, we've got a dedicated security department, and online fraud is a big thing, but I think fraud in general in any business it is a it is a, a real concern for anybody running any business whether it's online or offline um, but online businesses do, they I think people are a lot more skeptical about us because they've heard a lot of stories and a lot of things if I can give you some stats um, in South Africa we've got probably we do over 120,000 transactions through our site on a monthly basis mm -hmm. and sort of far less than zero point five of a percent um, is there actually a problem um, where there's the buyer maybe don't like the product um, or it doesn't get delivered um, and then obviously Ford would be included in that as well so it's generally online it's a very very small amount um, and then in Kenya so far we've had no problems at all um, it is because a lot of the businesses are local that people are buying from and even though they transact on the site, they can choose whether they want things to be delivered to them um, or whether they go to the store and collect it. So if you're unsure about a seller and if you really want the price and the product and you think it's a good price, you can actually contact them afterwards, speak to somebody on the phone and say to them, I would like to come and collect it. And, and, and that's normally possible with with a vast majority of, of the sellers. Okay, now let's look at the parks of this mode of buying and selling. What are some of the tremendous benefits a consumer can get out of this? Okay, main thing for consumers is price. Um, and that's why people shop online, is price is key. And price is key anywhere in the world. It's not a South African or a Kenyan thing. Mm -hmm. It's wherever you look. If you buy online, people buy for price. And the reason for that is you normally get better pricing online is because businesses can operate with lower overheads. Um, businesses, they don't have to be in fancy and expensive malls mm -hmm. um, where they have to pay really, really high amounts of, of rent every month. Um, so you can really rein your costs in a lot. Also, you find that those sort of businesses probably operate with, with fewer members of staff. So it's just the, the, the strain on the business and the risk that they incur s selling online is a lot less and that translates into better pricing. Okay, and maybe as we wind up, how, how does a, a trader sign up to bid or buy? Okay, it's very easy. They go onto the site and they can say, uh, there's a, there's a, on, the, on the home page, we've got a, a toolbar at the top where it says uh, sign in and people can register from there. Or if they are unsure about doing it, they can email us as well. If, I, if I'm allowed to, I'll give our yeah, email address. Yeah. It's quite simple. It's hello at bid or buy. So it's B-I-D-O-R-B-U-Y dot C-O dot K-E. Okay. So if they give, pop us an email and then we will get back to them immediately and, and, and assist them. So I've actually built a dedicated team to, to help people to do this. So we help people sign up. We go to businesses. We show them how to, to use the site how to uh, list their goods and their products. So um, there shouldn't be a barrier to entry for, for Kenyans. Okay, well, thank you very much for that insight.
Thank you so much for having me. Okay. Well, we have been speaking to Johan Dutroit, the business development manager of bidorbuy.co.ke, which is a platform for both uh, buyers and sellers uh, to communicate in terms of uh, displaying uh, products that they have or how they can go about buying them, which is quite convenient for any consumer because you get to do it um, from the comfort of your home or your office.